Hi everybody! Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Good evening everyone and welcome to our week number two ng ating mini coaching series. And uh, today po, I mean tonight, we are so we are so privileged to have with us is sa mga, ito, tingin ko na sabi ko na kanina sa ating Facebook Live, pero I would say it again, is sa mga pinaka-favorite persons ko in the world, we have uh, Professor Engelbert Reyes. And we're so proud of this guy kasi mga kaibigan na top two po siya sa ating board exam for teachers. Isa siya sa mga pinaka pinagmamalaki naming sudyante sa MPT. So, kamusta naman kayo dyan, my dear friends? Chat naman tayo. Iyan na ba tayo sa ating room ngayon? Magandang gabi. So, so siguro, bati muna tayo. Magandang gabi, Ma'am Genevieve, uh, Genevieve de Liguero. Hi po, Ma'am Sheng Bless Ventures. Ma'am Jen, magandang gabi po sa lahat. Ma'am Meryl uh, uh, Jenny Alea Puerto. Ayan na po si Engelbert. Engelbert, magandang gabi sa iyo. Siguro tulungan mo ako, ano tulungan mo ako bumati. Kapit, sir, EJ. <laughs> tulungan mo na akong bumati sa ating mga viewers. Batiin mo na sila. Siguro sa Cebuano, paano ba 'to ma- maayong gabi iba? Engelbert, uh, maayong gabi sa tanan no sa mga kabisayan. Ayan no. Tama-tama Engelbert si Daryl. Sabi niya nasa Cebu raw siya galing. Ayan, watching from Cebu. Wow. Ayan, hi Ma Mary Chris. Ayan. So, batiin mo sana mga ng na- Cebuano Engelbert. Magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. <laughs> Okay. Uh, may gabi sa tanan, no? Uh, please stay with us. Uh, like English na ako. <laughs> Ang kanunay, no? Pag-suporta sa, sa MET, no? Ayaw, ayaw mo uh, let go na mo, no? Uh, kada session na ate ihatag ng mga libreng mini-coaching. So, please uh, always support us, no? And then, uh, enjoy learning. Yes, sir. And if you haven't already, my dear friends, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like our page, and of course, share the link on your social media platforms para kumalat po ang balita na talaga meron pong libreng ginagawang mini-coaching ang MET for the month of June. So, alam mo ba, Sir Engelvert, napaka-successful ng ating first week nung June 5 and 6 with me and Mr. Uh, and of course with Sir Noy. At wow. ngayon, I think mas nagiging super successful ang ating second week with you. So, Engelbert, ngayong gabi ba, ano yung didiscuss mo sa amin ngayong gabi? Uh, tonight po, we will uh, cover uh, questions that talk about um, child and adolescent development and also Ayan. inclusive education. The last mini-coaching nung last month, May, medyo madami-dami po dun uh, tungkol sa research no, in education. But this time, uh, marami po Ngayon, no questions that has that have to do with uh, inclusive education, special education, and of course the child and adolescent development. Mo. Oh, sige. Pero sir Engelbert, bago bago ako magsimula, bati mo na tayo ng ating mga viewers ngayon. Tulungan mo naman ako. Meron ka bang monitor ng YouTube dyan? Nakikita mo ba sila? Ah, ngayon Hindi. sir, wala po sir. Hindi ah, wala. Ako na lang. Um, so Sorry, Ma'am po. Jennifer, no problem. <laughs> Ma'am Jennifer Leudin. <laughs> Jennifer Tangoan, sila Ma'am Mer- sila Ma'am Mary Chris Dumadora, hi po Teacher Regina, si Regina Juan ito. Syempre wow. si Ma'am uh, si Ma'am Jill Ebanes, at si Eleanor Villester, ang ating mga ang ating mga kasama mula pa ng Hybrid 1. Ayun. Wow. <laughs> Di mga best friends natin to, talaga namang team ko, <laughs> mga experts na to sa ating sa ating Ito. review. Sir Dexter, Ito. magandang gabi po sa inyo, magandang gabi. And of course, my dear friends, MET is doing this as a form of service para po matulungan yung mga kukuha ng board exam for teachers. And also, as a fulfillment of our promise sa aming mga sudyante ng Hybrid 1 at ng Hybrid 2 na ano ba yung promise natin, Engelbert? From the very beginning, from the very first lecture, hanggang sa makakuha na kayo ng lisensya nyo, MET will be with you in the journey. Yes. Hindi na so, ayan. Pababayaan, Totoo. hindi namin kibitawan. Mm-hmm. At hindi namin kayo tatantanan. <laughs> <laughs> Parang 24 oras. <laughs> oh, oh, we, will <laughs> we will not stop hanggang sa makuha nyo na ang yeah. mga lisensya. That's Actually, Engelbert, sila ang mag ba sa atin dito. Talagang we are always here for you hanggang sa ayaw nyo na. Pero sana naman mo kayong aayaw ha? kasi talagang we're doing this for you sa so, pagpasay nyo sa board exam for teachers. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, ayan. So, Engelbert, are you now ready? Um, yes, sir, of course, of course. Thank sige, you, sir. Tayo. Yes, well, thank you, away, sir. Engelbert. Yes. So, I'll share my screen. Okay. For a while. 
Uh, may I ask Miss Clarissa to allow me to share to share my screen? All right. Again, thank you so much, Sir EJ. So I hope you can see the 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 screen, my screen right now. So before I begin, I'd like to greet no everyone. Happy Independence Day to all of us. No araw ng kalayaan po natin. Uh, it has been 123 years since we uh, achieved no, our independence way back in June 12, 1898. No? So uh, 123 years na po tayong uh, independent, especially from, from Spain. Okay? So uh, sa US, kapag nag-independence nag, nag day celebrations, na grabe ito, bongga, may mga fireworks. No? Sana naman sa atin, ramdam din natin Araw ng kalayaan. We also celebrate our being independent, right? So again, for today or for tonight, we will be covering questions uh, on child and adolescent development and inclusive education. So this is again mini coaching. So hopefully every month, you no know, weekly, we get to see you and we give you some questions. You no, know, for this time, uh, I'll be sharing to you some ten questions. All right, uh, that are lab based, no? license licensure examination for professional teachers based. So, are you ready? Shall we? Shall we begin? All right. So let's start with the, our first question here. Okay. So uh, we'll be uh, we'll be uh, very straightforward here. No? Hindi tayo hindi tayo magpapatumpik tumpik pa, no? So. Question again, tapos we rationalize. All right. So let me read the question first. Okay. So when Anton was five months old, he looked at a train. But when his view of the train was blocked, he did not search for it. Now that he is nine months old, he does search for it, reflecting his development on the concept of blank. A, animism, B, assimilation, C, conservation, or D, object permanence. No? So, uh, basing on the question, what is your answer? Okay, so the answer for this question is actually letter D, no? object permanence. Why? No, bakit po object permanence? So, let me explain. No, ano ba yung animism? Ano ba yung assimilation, conservation, saka object per permanence? No? All of these concepts actually can be found under uh, Jean Piaget's, no? Jean Piaget's Cognitive Development Theory. So, the concept of animism, assimilation, conservation, nasa ano niya to? Um, yung stages no, of, of cognitive development. So, ano ba yung animism? Okay, so I have here the def definition no, para hindi na tayo mahirapan pa. Okay, so when you say animism, that is when the child understands bad table. No? Di ba? Kapag halimbawa tayo ay uh, dadapa, no? nung tayo ay mga two years old or one year old, ganyan, no? dadapa tayo, tapos uh, yung cost sa pagkadapa natin ay dahil sa isang uh, chair o di kaya table, tapos nagagalit tayo sa table, no? Iniisip natin na yung table parang tao lang din, no? So, uh, yun, no? We think that even objects have life, no? Have feelings, no? And behave like human beings. So, when the child believes that in, uh, inanimate objects have feelings and behaves the way humans do, we call that animism, okay? Assimilation naman, this occurs kapag... Uh, when we modify or change new information to fit in to our schemas or the schemas or what we already know. So, so again, when you say assimilation, kapag kailangan magkaroon ng adjustment no, dun sa ating prior knowledge. No? Oh, so, halimbawa, uh, yung bata, no? hindi niya alam yung kaibahan ng aso tsaka ng pusa. Tapos, nang tinuruan siya ng nanay niya nung no, kaya ba ng aso tsaka pusa yun no uh, magdadagdag siya ng bagong information tapos imomodify niya no? magkakaroon ng modification on the old information so magkakaroon na ng assimilation alright conservation naman kapag uh, eto nangyayari to sa um, sa second stage pa rin no? uh, pre-operation sensor motor pre-operational na kung saan yung bata hindi hindi niya ma uh, parang 
madali siyang malito no o malinla no kung kapag nakita niya na yung halimbawa dalawang uh, container no two glasses of water then having the equal amount of water pero nang nilipat yung isang baso sa isang mataas ngunit uh, makitid no very very thin glass akala niya mas marami yung laman no? ng, ng, ang mas maraming laman yung uh, makitid na na baso no so nagkaroon na ng uh, ano wala pa siyang conservation by by that time no mag kapag meron na siyang conservation doon na tayo natin malalaman na nag-advance na pala siya sa susunod na stage at yun ang concrete operational stage no so it is conservation is the awareness that a quant quantity remains the same despite a change in its appearance no? another example could be yung clay tapos uh, hinulma mo forming into something you know, like a pot or a flower no at akala nung bata ibang ano na siya ibang object na yan no hindi na yun yung dating clay no so hindi na conserved no wala pa siyang uh, clear understanding of what conservation is no? At finally, which is our answer, the object permanence. So, ano ba yung object permanence? If we go back to the question, right? Sabi dito, uh, nakita ni Anton yung train. No? Pero, nung tinabunan yung train or tinago yung train, bigla, hindi na niya hinanap. Okay, meaning to say, agad-agad niyang nakalimutan yung tungkol sa train. No? Nawala sa kanyang isip yung tungkol sa train. Ibig sabihin yung bata, wala pa siyang object permanence. All right. So ano ba yung object permanence? It, this is very common among babies no, during sensory motor stage, no? The child's uh, ability to know that objects continue to exist even when they can no longer be seen or heard. No? So yung mga bata at first walang object permanence, pero through time magkakaroon na sila ng object permanence. Na kahit hindi nila nakikita yung yung laruan, yung isang bagay or hindi niya hindi nila naririnig, naka-stick pa rin dun sa kanilang mind, no? Yung 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 memory yung idea ng object na iyon no? so kaya object permanent siya no? to show it uh, more concretely no or clearly so here is a, a screenshot no of uh, from i think from a newspaper clipping okay so kita natin yung baby no? all right in red shirt tapos may parang stuffed toy all right so nakikita nung bata yung yung uh, stuffed toy pero in a split of a second tinabunan all right ng adult ng isang adult yung stuffed toy at mukhang nakalimutan ni baby yung tungkol sa stuffed toy bigla biglash biglang biglang nawala sa isip niya no so ibig sabihin wala pa siyang object permanence kasi hindi niya nakikita hindi niya naririnig so akala niya so nakakalimutan din niya tuluyan no so hindi na rin niya naiisip no? pero kapag meron ng object permanence hahanapin nung bata no so yun yung parang uh, sign all right na kapag hinahanap ng nung bata yung isang bagay na hindi man hindi niya nakikita o hindi niya naririnig meron na siyang object permanence okay so yan po yung object kaya uh, common din yung di ba yung peekaboo right sa sa peekaboo um yung bata natutuwa no kapag when we open our hands when we close our hands tayong natatawa sila kasi akala nila when we close our hands bigla tayong nag-disappear and then when we open parang magic to bigla tayong nag-appear kasi wala pa silang object permanence thinking na it's like magic di ba so yan ang object permanence mo let's proceed to uh, question number two which statement best resolves the nature nurture controversy all right a nurture is clearly more important in development than nature b nature is clearly more important than nurture in human development c neither nurture nor nature plays a, a particularly strong roles in development or d the interaction between nature and nurture is most important in development all right so ano yung sagot niyo po sa question na, na ito okay so i hope you answered letter d all right so paano d yung sagot natin um if we try to analyze each option all right halimbawa dito nurture is more important compared to nature okay 
si B naman, mas pabor kay nature. No? Nature is more important than nurture. C naman, neither nurture nor nature plays uh, important roles. No? Pero sa D, it's the interaction daw between nature and nurture that is important no? in development. Um, if you recall, during our regular session, no, sa mga sudyante namin, during the regular lecture no, or the met hybrid natin, no, hybrid program, uh, I presented this power slide no, in, in the PowerPoint. No? So these are the developmental issues my nature versus nurture, continuity versus stages, stability versus change. But because the question uh, only talks about nature versus nurture, no? so ano ba yung nature, ano ba yung nurture? When we say nature, we believe that our human development our human development is influenced no, by our heredity or genes. When we say nurture, we, we believe that our experience, no, our life experience, no, like yung pag-aaruga ng ating parents, no, family, experience with barkada, no, church, ganyan, or school, have more influence no, in our development. Yeah? Yun yung nurture. Pero ano ba yung parang ag naging agreement ng mga experts no, ng mga developmental uh yung mga developmentalist no? okay so eto eto yung isa din sa mga slides ko po sa sa powerpoint ko um sabi dito uh, in evaluating developmental issues okay most developmentalists acknowledge that development is not all or nothing no, hindi po pwedeng tayo ay more influence sa nature lang walang nurture no or more influence sa continuity walang discontinuity or change no over stability no so hindi wala tayong pinapaboran no we instead recognize or acknowledge that both sides have influence over us and the interaction of them no Lo looking at how they interact together no would be uh, a more appropriate way of looking at this developmental issues. All right? So yan po yung explanation no kung bakit yung sagot natin for this question is letter D, no? The interaction between nature and nurture are important in development. All right? Let's proceed to our third question. Live well, a 7-year-old boy was asked by his teacher to tell which is greater between 3 and 4. Limuel had to count on his fingers for him to answer. What condition is affecting Limuel based on his response? A, emotional, B, neurological, C, mental, or D, physical. Okay, so I hope you've got this question right, all right? The answer for this question is letter. Okay, but before that, Ano ano kaya yung uh, dapat nating i-illuminate? But one of the strategies when we analyze okay questions especially uh, in board exam, yung test taking strategies is the process of elimination, no? So it's best for this case to eliminate yung medyo malayo sa sagot, okay? So kasi we're talking about counting no? and counting is a is a mental, no? is a it's a it's cognitive, no? a very cognitive uh, action. Okay, so basically, medyo malayo si physical at saka si emotional. No? So eliminate natin si emotional at saka si physical. Now, we are, uh, we now have only two options left. No, we have neurological at saka si mental. Saan kaya between neurological at mental yung final answer? Okay, so let me reveal. All right. So the final answer is letter B, neurological. Now you ask, sir, bakit? Ano ba yung kaibahan ng neurological at mental? Okay? So under, you know, DSM, yung mga, yung mga disorders, it's like um, a handbook or a manual or parang dictionary no, of, of all the disorders, no, psychological, psychiatric, mga ganyan. No? And then may, ano sila, no? may, uh, delineation, right? There's a difference when we say neurological disorder versus mental disorders or psychiatric disorders, no? So, ano yung difference? Allow me to read. When you say neurological disorders, these involve 
malfunctioning of no or dam damage no, to the nervous system damage in the brain in the spinal cord and in, in the nerves no? the nervous system infections are also treated by neurolog neurologists okay so basically kapag uh, nagkaroon ng malfunctioning no or or damage dun sa ating brain tsaka of course part ng ating uh, nervous system na spinal cord tsaka yung nerves no tawag din is neurological disorder now when you say mental disorders or more popularly known as psychiatric disorders these are you know pertaining to disturbed behavior or disturbed emotional state okay so halimbawa yung mga schizophrenia yung mga Di ba yung mga insanity, craziness, no, mga loka-loka, ganyan. It's more of a mental disorder rather than neurological disorder. Okay? okay. Yung mga neurological, yung magkakaroon ng um, ano, yung mga Parkinson's disease, no? hindi makokontrol yung mga movement. No? Kasi something in the brain is affecting the movement. Dementia is also neurological kasi something, some cells in the brain are, are affected. Kaya hindi na nakaka hindi na nakaka remember, all right? Mayan yung mga examples ng neurological. Okay? Now, specifically, yung tanong is actually covered sa inclusive education or sa special education po, no? It's one of the disabilities. Specifically, uh dyscalculia, okay? Dyscalculia are one of the common types of specific learning disabilities or SLD. No, ano po ba yung dyscalculia? Dyscalculia, also known as uh, development dyscalculia, is a neurological condition. No? So, galing po ito sa UNESCO. No? Yung source natin is new, uh, UNESCO, no? mgiet.unesco.org. So, sabi dito, dyscalculia is a neurological condition. So, this is very obvious. No? Paano naging uh, neurological condition yung tanong? Di ba? Sabi dun sa situation, si Limwell, tinanong kung saan ba mas malaki yung three or four. Kailangan pa niya gamitin yung kamay niya kasi nahihirapan siya to do mental math. Okay? At if you if you try to look at this part, alright, ito yung mga signs and symptoms kumbaga when a child has dyscalculia. Alright? Children struggle with, with automatically recalling an answer that they have already arrived at and fall into the habit of counting up no, often on their fingers to calculate their answer over and over again. So, again, uh, dyscalculia is a, is a specific learning disability. Bakit specific? Kasi isang skill lang yung problematic sa kanya. Anong skill? Mathematic, mathematical skills. Alright? So, yung bata kapag problema sa kanya, yung pag yung pagkocompute, no, arithmetic, no, addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, ganyan, no? Or, Mga, again, mga algebra, logical no, calculation, mga ganyan, numbers, number concept, dyscalculia po yan. Marami pa iba, no? hindi lang under learning disabilities or SLD, no, specific learning disabilities, meron tayong dyslexia, which is, I think most of you have heard already, no, yung dyslexia, which is also a problem on reading. No? Uh, dysgraphia, a problem in writing, no, spelling, tsaka handwriting. No? Uh, ano pa? Dyspraxia, uh, visual processing disorder, auditory processing disorder, no? at marami pang iba. But ito yung mga medyo common types of specific learning disabilities. Okay? So I, I hope you've learned something new no? with our session no? right now. Okay? So now let's proceed to our next question. Okay. So sabi dito, research confirms that students' motivation is affected by his or her social cultural background. Which of the following observations affirms this finding? A, girls mature earlier than the boys. B, brains of the males function better than those of the females. C, children of low-income household meet more obstacles in learning or the genetic endowments may show gifted endowments among the young. No? So what we are looking at here is ano, ano sa tingin niyo po, alin dito, yung pinaka research base. Okay? Do you think girls mature earlier than the boys? Is it a research base? 
no? And eto pa no, hindi lang research based, dapat ano din pertaining to socio-cultural background. Okay? Is gender related to socio-cultural background? Okay? Then brains daw of the males function better than those of the females. Is this research based? Is this pertaining to socio-cultural background? Children of low income household meet more obstacles in learning. Is this research based? Is this pertaining to social cultural background? And finally, genetic no, endow endowments. No, is it social cultural background related? Okay. So if you try to see the connection, no, alin ba dito yung medyo connected sa social cultural background? Medyo obvious. No, medyo obvious. Kita kita yung sagot, no. And of course, it would be letter C, no. Because when you say income, no, socio economic status, it's part of social cultural background no ano 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 ba yung mga aspects ng social cultural background religion all right is part of social cultural background you know yung na nationality yung culture natin no yung ethnicity okay socio economic status ayan so mapayaman ka ba mahira poverty no middle class again it's these are all aspects of social cultural background gender is not an aspect of social cultural background Okay, because it's more of your nature, no genes, yeah, no gender. Same with genetic endowments. No? Beginning male, female, girls, boys, genetic endowments. These are all nature-based, no genetic or hereditary based. Well, letter C is more on the nurture side, specifically on the social cultural background. Now, is that is that research based? No, according to insight into university.com. Sabi dito, the impact. No, sabi ni Jonah Edelman, the PhD. Okay, sabi niya, the impact of poverty on a child's academic achievement is significant and starts early. Right? Young children growing up in poverty face challenges with cognitive and literary ability and begin school both ac academically and socioeconomically behind their peers as compared no behind their peers from higher income backgrounds so you you hear no, from from this statement you would realize really na mas maraming obstacles no yung mga batang coming from poor sector no from the poverty line no from the marginalized no, sector mas madami lang obstacles no, to to learn no better and to be at best when they're in school especially ngayon online no ang dami obstacles even gadgets, no? Kaya, kaya yung DepEd, di ba? Nag, meron tayong mga options, no? Modular learning. Wala ng online-online. Bibigyan na lang ng modules. O di kaya radio, TV broadcasting. Doon manunod yung mga bata. So, so mga ganyan mga strategies just to address and to, you know, make uh, education accessible to everyone, including those who cannot afford. Right? Now, let's proceed to our next question. No? So, Medyo uh, mabilis yung pacing natin. No? <laughs> okay. So next question, social behavior risks and social cognitive risks. Uh, believe, oh, believe that learning is influenced by social interaction and interpersonal relations. With this in mind, a teacher must plan. A, give more independent study. B, make students work collaboratively. C, make students feel good about themselves. Or D, motivate students to reflect on how they learn. Okay, so ano ba yung clue? No? It's important that when we uh, analyze, all right, left question or left questions, we, we highlight keywords. Ang hinahanapin talaga natin yung pinaka uh, main uh, content, no main idea, keywords found in the stem, found dun sa question. Ano ba yung mga keywords dito? Social behaviorist, social cognitivist, and then social interaction. Okay? So, alin dito ang medyo nag-promote no? sa social interaction? No? Social cognitivism, and social behaviorism. No? So of course, no, it gives more independent study, work collaboratively, makes students feel good, motivates students. So alin jan? Medyo easy to, okay? Because if you're going to analyze saan ba dito magkakaroon ng opportunity ng so, uh, uh, of social interaction, it would be letter B, no? Make 
students work collaboratively. All right. Now, just a quick recap, no, a review of our lecture pertaining to social theories. Right. Although there are so social cognitive theories, social behaviors, no, but generally we call them social theories as well. So, one famous theory is the social learning theory by Albert Bandura. Okay. If you can recall the uh, a -A, uh, ARMM, no? attention retention, uh, motor reproduction, tapos motivation, yung observational learning, the Bobodal ex experiment. No? So a child learns through observation. All right. So kung may nakita siyang tao in front of him, na ganito yung movement, there's a chance na he will also follow or uh, imitate. All right. Modeling. Right. So social learning, not necessarily live person. It can also be from TV, nakikita niya sa TV, na, napapanood niya sa YouTube, no, or Facebook. Another pillar of so, in, in social theory, all right, or in, in how do you call that? So um, social, uh, new socialist, no? social related theories, okay, is social cultural theory by Lev Vygotsky. And if you can recall, Lev Vygotsky, Popularize ZPD, right? The zone of proximal development, the scaffolding, the, the more knowledgeable others. No, but uh, basically the broad idea of that theory by Lev Vygotsky is that a person's cognitive development, yung, ment yung, yung learning down natin, is largely influenced. No, mas nauhubog yung ating mental de cognitive development sa surrounding culture. All right. So sa church, kung saan tayo nakatira, sino yung nakapalibot natin, sino yung friends natin, no? So if your friends are all English speaking, so may, maybe your cognitive development is inclined to that. Magiging English speaking ka rin, no? Tuwang-tuwang, no? Medyo konyo-konyo ka rin. If you are surrounded by a family na sobrang de devoted, no? Catholic, sobrang religious. So yung cognitive development mo rin, no? Yung philosophies in life, your biases, your perspective in life would be leaning to that as well. Ayan. So, basically, it's still about social interaction, right? Now, let's try to look at the anatomy all right, of the options. Okay? So, how do we rationalize? If you, if he may may natin about options, see letter A, give more independence. So, this is actually a counter parang it's a, not really a, a, a counter no but more of uh, because in in modern teaching we both um in modern teaching we both promote independent or autonomous learning because that is needed for 21st century it's a 21st century skill for it to survive in the future you know uh, to be ready for the world you have to have some some kind of ability you not know, to learn on your own Aside from that, we also um, emphasize, equally emphasize being a team player, being able to communicate yourself, no? collaboration. No? Remember the four C's of 21st century uh, learning skills, no? communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creative thinking. No? So um, here, letter A is focusing on that. At, no? Independent autonomous learning. However, dun sabi naman ito, make students work collaboratively. And when say collaboratively or collaboration, it's obvious na magkakaroon ng social interaction. Na magkakaroon ng social learning or learning through social interaction. How about C? Well, iba rin yung perspective nung C. Yung hina-highlight natin sa C, make students feel good about them. So it's more all about praising. No? appreciation no? so parang more of external reward all right so parang operant condition remember reinforcement or positive reinforcement negative reinforcement no and then motivation din no pwedeng uh, it has to do with motivation no um, the need to be appreciated no? dun sa Maslow's hierarchy of needs and finally letter d motivating students to reflect on how they learn at yung pinaka concept ng metacognition you have to think about your own thinking. You have to reflect about your own learning, right? So metacognition. So if you can see of all the options, alin dito yung pinaka bull's eye? No, I repeat, yung question natin, ang pinaka main idea is about social, social interaction. So ano yung pinaka bull's eye dito? 
letter B, no? make students work collaboratively. No? So, ganun dapat. When, by the time you take the board exam, you should have that kind of levels of analysis no? from getting the key idea in the STEM no? to, uh, to looking at the anatomy of each option and then putting a connection. No? Sa, alin ba dito ang magiging swa? No? From the question to the option. Right? So yeah, no, just that's just one of the techniques. All right, let's proceed to another question. Miggy, a two-year-old boy, has manifestations of special needs. So obviously, this has to do with inclusive ed or special education. His parents decided to put him under early intervention program. Under special education, what is mainly addressed by early intervention program for children with disabilities ages 0 to 3 years old? A, early growth or development lag. B, ensuring inclusion for special children. C, preventing labeling of disabled children. Or C, identifying strengths and weaknesses in special children. So I repeat, ano yung pinaka uh, main idea no, dun sa question, sa tanong, it has to do with early intervention. No? And yung tanong is, ano ba ang na-address dun sa early intervention program? No? So when you do early intervention, ano ba yung ina-address natin? Okay? So ano po yung sagot ninyo? Okay. So, the answer, no, ladies and gentlemen, it's letter A. No? Ina-address natin yung early growth lag or development lag. Okay, bakit? No, bakit? Now, this is, uh, again, from uh, one of my, my sources, no, defining uh, early intervention. Huh? So, sabi dito, early intervention refers to services and supports that can help young children with developmental delays. Now, in the United States, kasi worldwide, no, United, United States yung pinaka model natin when it comes to inclusive education. No? They have in so many aspects, legal aspects, environment aspect, no, talagang they have been very aggressive towards promoting ito, no? inclusive ed, tsaka, uh, special education. So uh, the the concepts here are actually coming from the definition of, in, in the context of the United States. Now, again, when you say early intervention, this is to help young children with their developmental delays. It's like special education, but all right. Remember, special education starts when the child goes to formal schooling. Pero kung kapag wala pa siyang formal schooling. Hindi, wala pa siya sa age for formal schooling. No? Infant pa yung bata, toddler pa yung bata. Hindi, sped, hindi special education ang ibibigay natin, kundi early intervention program. No? Kasi tatlo yan. Um, early intervention program for um, before school age, during school age special education, after school age, uh, meron tayong kitawag na transition program. No? Yun yun yung placement, no? bibigyan na sa ng work, ipofocus na yung training towards work, mga ganyan. Okay? Usually kapag adult na yung, yung tao na, na may disability. Alright? Now, going back. Paano tayo nagiging sure na yun, yun tagay yung nasa question? Remember, doon sa question sabi doon, yung bata is 2 years old. Alright? Balik na natin. Ayan. Si Migi is 2 years old. At sabi dito, yung early intervention program daw is para sa mga children with disabilities na edad 0 to 3. At ano nakalagay sa definition? In the early intervention, kids from birth to age 3, right, gets services at home or in the community. Early intervention focuses on skills such as physical skills, cognitive skills, communication skills, adaptive skills, and then social or emotional skills. So usually, what uh, developmentalists do and child experts and educators would do is they would look at whether the child's skills 
have been lagging behind, no? Kana uh, na delay, nagkaroon ba ng delay sa development by looking at developmental milestones. Alam niyo man yung developmental milestones every month, particular, no? Particular month, my specific ano talaga when it comes to the physical aspect, language aspect, social skills, no? Motor motor skills, no? Fine, na growth tsaka fine motor, no? Ganun. Napaka-specific. Tapos parang ang mangyayari, chine-check natin, no? Yung bata, yung anak ko ba, check na ba dito sa skill na to? Parang may checklist. No? Oy, hindi pa, hindi pa nagsho-show yung bata, hindi pa nagma-manifest. No? Ayan. So it might be a clue sa mga parents at saka sa mga ano experts na din pati mga pediatrician ganyan na medyo na delay pala yung bata no when it comes to these skills kapag na, nako-confirm na delayed talaga bibigyan ng tinatawag nating uh, early intervention program yung bata okay so i hope that's clear right next question ayan Which theory highly regards the adoption of uh, teaching methods and strategies to the learner's biological and developmental set of characteristics? I repeat, which theory, theory highly regards the adoption of teaching methods and strategies to the learner's biological and developmental set of characteristics? Highlight. Biological and developmental no? characteristics. Yan. Importante yan. No? So, A, emotional intelligence theory. B, learning style theory. C, reading readiness theory. Or D, multiple intelligence theory. No? So, alin kaya sa apat? Okay. So, again, teaching strat daw na kung saan na naka-align doon sa or sumang-ayon doon sa sa characteristics biological or developmental characteristics ng bata. Okay? Is it emotional intelligence, no? So, if we try to eliminate kung kapag emotional medyo malayo ng konti kasi isang aspeto lang, the emotional side lang. So, parang hindi hindi siya yung sagot, no? So, remove that. No? Ano pa yung i-remove natin? Okay? Si letter C din, no? reading. No? Kasi parang isang aspect lang din, reading lang talaga. No? Kasi yung question is more or holistic eh, dun sa biological developmental set of characteristics. Eh. So, hindi po pwede reading isang aspect lang, reading lang talaga. So, eliminate A, eliminate C. Now, we are left with B and D. Now, ang tanong, sa alin dito between B at D yung totoong sagot? Right. So the correct answer is letter B, learning style theory. All right? Bakit? Okay. So meron tayong bookish ano talaga no? Definition reference. Ayan. So uh, mas ano tayo eh, mas may credibility tayo kapag kitang-kita talaga word for word no kung saan galing yung reference no yung source. So sabi ni Don and Don who defined, no they defined I think Rita and Kenneth, I think they're a couple. Right? Both are experts in pedagogy you know, and, and learning styles. So they defined okay, learning style in 1978. Sabi nila, learning styles are uh, biological okay, and uh, are based no, on their biological and individual developmental characteristics of the individuals. No? So, okay. Basahin ko lang to, no? They considered, the Dun and Dun considered some developmental characteristics into consideration while determining learning styles. These are biological and developmental characteristics. So, kitang-kita po natin na kapag learning styles, nakabasi po siya sa biological at developmental characteristics ng learner. Okay? Tapos, dito sa box, sabi dito, Uh, this model is represented through five stimuli, the environmental, emotional, sociological, physiological, and psychological. So all aspects din pala, no? pati environmental aspect. No? So kaya pala, when we imagine preschool, di ba? ano ba yung learning style ng mga kindergartners or mga nursery uh, pupil learners, no? yung mga young learners, yung mga very young kids? Ano ba yung 
uh, characteristics nila at ano ang nakikita natin sa isang nursery room or di kaya sa isang kindergarten classroom. Di ba makikita natin na pupunin ang mga makukulay, no? may mga flowers, mga uh, ka- cartoons, no? pictures of kids. No? Uh, ano pa ba? Very attractive. No? And then the activities are filled with songs and games and music, no? may musical instruments, puro takta. Kasi when you say learning styles, all aspect, whether environmental, emotional, physiological, you know, the physical aspect, or psychological, the cognitive aspect, dapat fitting, appropriate sa learner. No? Kaya learning style. When we, uh, we always fit the activities, the environment, or teaching strategies no? to the type of learner, no? the biological and developmental characteristics of our learner. I hope that's clear, no? But um, let's define, no? The other terms, no? We already know what learning style is, pero how do we define emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence became a trend, no? In I think early 2000, no? Or, or yeah, around starting 2000, no? The idea about emotional intelligence, emotional quotients. Dati kasi before 21st century, no? IQ, IQ, IQ na lang palagi. And then only in the recent century that we emphasize EQ, no, emotional intelligence. So Daniel Goldman published a book that really delved into about emotional intelligence. And this is how he defined emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is the ability to perceive emotions, to access and generate emotions. So as to as assist thought, to understand emotions and emotional knowledge, and to reflectively regulate emotions so as to promote emotional and intellectual growth. So basically, it has to do with how well you manage your emotion, how well you're aware of your current emotions, no? and then how you express that emotions to others. No? And side by side with your intellectual growth as well. So that's what emotional intelligence is. And then what about reading readiness? So there is no single proponent or author of this, because there are a lot of sources when it comes to reading readiness theory. And it's not theory even, it's a group of theories. So, but the idea of reading re- readiness is this. Reading readiness has been defined as the point at which a person or a learner is ready to learn to read. And the time during which a person transitions from being a non-reader into a reader. So it's that moment when the child just suddenly have that high interest no, to wanting to learn to read. So that's reading readiness. Kapag hindi pa umabot yung bata sa ganong level, no, hindi pa siya nagkaroon ng interest. So ibig sabihin, wala pang readiness. Hindi pa ready yung bata. Pero kapag na, na, nandun na siya sa point na kung saan gusto na niyang matutong ma, magbasa, ayan. So yun, yun na tinatawag na yung reading readiness. Okay? And then finally, multiple intelligence. Of course, no, parang no need not to explain this, but uh, no, just for the sake of those, no, baka yung iba, wala talagang knowledge. No? Multiple intelligences is a theory first posited by an award-winning Harvard graduate, all right? Howard Gardner in 1983, who suggested that human intelligence can be differentiated into eight modalities. So it's not only on the academic aspect and intelligence hindi lang sa academic aspect so he divided it into eight modalities no the visual spatial the verbal linguistic musical rhythmic logical mathematical interpersonal intrapersonal naturalistic and bodily kinesthetic and then in early 2000 or 2006 or 2008 nadagdagan si um existentialist no? as one of the modalities naging naging nine nine modalities na po siya ayan no? so again our answer in the previous question is learning style okay dito naman tayo sa isang importanting theory no? developmental theory one of the pillars no? si Eric Erickson is one of the pillars when it comes to developmental principles and theories all right Based on Erickson's psychosocial theory of development, which of the following statements does not speak about initiative versus guilt? All right. A, it is hard to rely on others. 
B, I am prepared to take risks. C, uh, in difficulty, I will not give up. D, I feel what happens to me is the result of what I have done. No? So, I think dito yung hindi. Uh, hindi nag, uh, hindi pertaining to initiative versus guilt. Okay, so sa Tagalog, ano yung initiative? The initiative is kusa. Right? When you have that willingness to do it on your own or to take the first step, no? or the creativity not to just do it on your own. No? So initiative yan. Guilt naman is when you feel bad about what you're doing. When you feel bad about your own uh, initiative no? or say mga ginagawa mo. No? So that, that's guilt basically. So sa alin dito ang hindi tungkol sa guilt or sa initiative? No? Of course, medyo uh, ano din to? Medyo obvious din yung sagot. Okay? Ano, ano sa tingin natin yung sagot dito? No? Of course, it should be letter A. Bakit? Because of the word rely. When you say rely, rely is, uh, you know, rely means uh, to trust, to depend. Right? And remember, there is already uh, and th there is another stage for that, right? The first stage, and that's trust versus mistrust, diba? Trust versus mistrust, autonomy versus shame and doubt, no? And then initiative versus guilt, all right? So, pangatlo si initiative versus guilt, no? Around four to five years old. So, B, C, and D are all pertaining to initiative and guilt, no? B, prepared to take risk is initiative, C, in difficulty, I will not give up this initiative. D, I feel what happens to me is a result of what I have done is more on guilt. Okay, so B and C are initiative, D is guilt, but A is mistrust. So of all the options, C, A yung hindi kasama sa grupo. Okay, now, um, during our regular no, met hybrid no, session or lecture, I, I've, I've given a handout no, about this. No? So my questionnaire developed by Otzi and Plog. Okay? No, kung saan they would have to respond. No? Zero. Ganyan. No? One, two, three. Ganyan. No? May mga items. No? So, kompleto uh, yan. No? Bawat stage may limang tanong. No? Tapos they have to rate. Okay? So if you look at it, ito yung tanong. Dun sa questionnaire na yun, kasi may ilang tatong pages ata yun. Sa questionnaire under initiative versus sa questions under initiative versus guilt. So ito yung mga tanong. I am prepared to take risks to get what I want. O di ba? Ito yung tanong ng letter letter N, sorry. Letter B. Sa mali, mali pala ito. No? It should be letter B. No? So letter B ito. Ayan. No? So kita, nakita nyo na. So it's letter B, right? Letter B ito na. Saan naman si letter C? Letter C is here. No? When I have difficulty, I give up. Si letter D, no option D, I feel what happens to me is the result of what I've done, yung, yung about guilt. No? Right? So, obvious na obvious. No? May ebidensya tayo na si B, C, D is under dun talaga sa initiative versus guilt. No? I am prepared to take risks. In difficulty, I will not give up. No? I feel what happens to me is a result of what I've done. So all of them are here. All right? So uh, my advice is familiarize this questionnaire. No, kasi I have observed no, through many years, no, over the years, I've noticed na kapag gagamit sila ng mga Ericsson na items, parang kinukuha nila, binabasa dun sa questionnaire na, na ito. No? So, iibahin lang ng konti yung pagkakastate, no? pero the idea, the wordings, almost the same. No? Very, very similar. Okay? So, yeah. Alright. We now proceed to our next question. Which of the following characteristics is like, most likely true to all teenagers or adolescents? A. Hormonal changes, B, last splurge of independence, C, unruly behavior, or D, defiance of peer group. 
no? So ano ba yung pinaka importanting keyword dito, no? True to all teenagers or adolescents, no? True to all teenagers or adolescents. Saan alin pa dito yung true to all? Okay, so the answer medyo easy to actually. No? The answer is of course letter A. Hormonal changes. Bakit yung B, C and D hindi ba true to all? Hindi, no? When you say hormonal changes given talaga kapag nagbibinata, nagdadalaga yung isang learner, no, isang tao, okay? Magkakaroon talaga yan ng hormonal changes no, sa lalaki, magkakaroon ng uh, pubic hair, deepening of the voice, magbabodin yung shoulder, magkakaroon ng mga tagyawat, no, mga pimples, and so on. No, bigote, right? Mag-iiba din yung structure ng face. Yeah, magkakaroon din ng mga mag-shape na rin yung parang abs no, yung, yung katawan. Sa babae naman, lalaki yung uh, breast, right? Yung hips, ano pa, magkakaroon ng menstruation. No, sa, sa, no, diba? May, the first menstruation is known as menarche. Sa lalaki naman, the first, um, anong tawag dito? The, fir, the, the, uh, the re- release of semen. The first release of semen is known as spermarche. Right? So, it's all because of the hormones. No? Yung lalaki, pag nagbibinata, medyo aakyat yung Hor- yung testosterone, yung male hormones ng todo-todo, alright? Kung kaya't magkakaroon ng so many sudden changes, maging oily yung face, no? pimples, and so on. Uh, minsan yung iba, di ba? Ibang mga bata, mahihirapang mag-adjust. No? Magkakaroon ng psychological, emotional, um, kumbaga struggles, right? Accepting the changes because of hormones. Same din sa babae. Magkakaroon, mag-change din yung lifestyle, no the way they handle themselves no magiging conscious na and so on last purge of independence no maybe a little common but again not true to all hindi hindi lahat ng adolescents and teenagers would splurge no their their independence and then unruly behavior hindi din lahat defiance hindi rin lahat okay so yung pinaka true to all is letter a form walang exemption unless hindi ka tao no so walang exemption no? lahat magkakaroon ng hormonal changes okay dito tayo sa I think ito na yung last question no? I believe when children oh, di ba um, anyway parang one hour na pala tayo no? hindi lang natin uh, hindi natin napansin no? one hour na pala when children experience a chronic condition marked by persistent inattention hyperactivity and sometimes impulsivity these children said to have these children are said to have special condition known as a attention deficit hyperactivity disorder b learning disability c intellectual disabilities or d speech and communication disorders so again medyo easy ito kasi yung mga description like inattention right hyperactivity impulsivity. Medyo makikita na ta- natin dito yung medyo very related siya sa which option? No? Sa letter A. No? Kung kaya, ang sagot natin is obviously letter A. No? Attention, deficit, hyperactivity disorder. Right. Now, how do we define the rest of the um, atawag natin ito categories of disabilities? No? So, in United States, the very parang uh, basis of all their decisions when it comes to inclusive education, special education, naka, ano yan, nakastipit dun sa uh, IDA, Individuals with Disabilities Education Act of 2004. Okay? Nandun rin yung the 13 categories of disabilities and they define each disability. Okay? So, according to IDA or IDEA, Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is a disorder marked by an ongoing pattern of inattention or hyperactivity impulsivity that interferes with functioning or development. Specific learning disability naman, sometimes we just call it just call it learning disability or learning disabilities. So it's a disorder in which one or more of the basic psychological processes involved in understanding or using language, spoken or written, that may manifest itself in the 
Ito yung highlight. Imperfect ability to listen, to think, to speak, read, write, spell, or do mathematical calculations. Ito na yung mga dyscalculia, dysgraphia, dyslexia, dyspraxia, visual processing disorder, auditory processing disorder, dysautographia, and, and many more. No? And many more. No? So yan, specific learning disability po yan. So okay naman sa, sa ibang aspeto no, sa kanilang buhay. Yung ano lang talaga, yung deficiency lang talaga, yung disability lang talaga is doon sa isang particular uh, learning skill. No? So it could be writing lang talaga, it could be reading lang talaga, or it could be calculating lang talaga. No? So yan, kaya nga specific, no? kasi specific learning disability siya. Intellectual disability man, formerly known as um, mental retardation. Although in the modern times, medyo hindi na accepted not to say mental retardation kasi medyo may negative connotation siya. Unlike intellectual disability, mas, uh, it sounds respectable. No? It sounds more respectable. Right? So, ayan, intellectual disabilities. It involves problems with general mental so generally yung kanilang mental ability is mababa no? low iq talaga no uh, di ba kung may genius in the other far end is uh, idiotic no um ano ano pa ba yung term na idiotic um hindi gumagana yung uh, language ano ko no basta ganyan no? idiotic no uh May ano din yan, may scales din yan. No, kung yung IQ nila is, halimbawa, I think 60, starting 60 below, under na siya sa intellectual disability. Again, formerly known as mental retardation. So kung yung IQ niya is 45 to 60 or 70, medyo ano na siya, no? mild, no? mild mental retardation. Magiging, tapos kung worse, no? ang susunod na level is moderate, tapos severe. Pero kapag mga 0 to ano na, no, 0 to 10 or 20 level IQ level, ano na talaga siya no profound. Ayan, no? So mababa yung kanyang intellectual functioning at hindi lang yan. Sa adaptive functioning din mababa siya, no? Sa independent living skills, communication. So uh, usually kapag may mental retardation, no? Halimbawa yung mga Down syndrome, children with Down syndrome, no? Kaya nga tinuturuan natin sa paano mag-commute no sasakay ng jeep paano mamamalengke mama, paano paano, paano magbrush ng teeth no ito yung mga adaptive skills no kung saan kasi medyo poor sila sa kanilang adaptive functioning tinuturuan natin sila sa mga ganitong skills no so yan yan po yung intellectual disability and finally speech and language impairment no pero nakalagay dun sa option speech and communication impairment no although same same lang din no but ang actual name ng category talaga is speech and language impairment. So these are uh, basic categories that might be drawn in issues of communication involving hearing, speech, language, and fluency. So yung problema ng mga uh, learners na may ganitong uh, kap, uh, kapansana, no? speech and language impairment, ay halimbawa, uh, bunge, no? may cleft palate, or, or cleft lip, no cleft lip pwede rin cleft palate yung ngala-ngala talaga may cleft no may parang butas or stuttering okay o di kaya yung kanyang um kanyang ano tawag dito kanyang mga words nagkaka ano nagkaka switch no about yung violet mahirapan siyang magpronounce ng violet violet a uh, valoyet ganyan no royal mahirapan siyang mga ganyan ano pa ba no um Lion, no? uh, basta yung mga ganyan. Yung parang mahirapan siyang mag, ano, no? nagkaka-interchange yung mga syllables. Iba, um, pwede rin addition. No? Bawat words niya may, may letter S. No? Uh, kayos, mga, mga ganyan. No? Um, uh, dear students, no? you know, always may letrang uh, additional letter no na hindi niya intention hindi hindi intentional na dagdagan no pero parang nadagdagan talaga or di kaya nag nababawas din no may omission ganyan or so there are a lot of types there are actually a lot no but um usually din discuss namin to kapag 
no? Uh, pang SPED major na talaga. No? So, ito lang yung mga general knowledge. No? So, I hope you learn, no? I think that's the end. Yeah, so congratulations to us. Natapos din yung sampung questions. No? So, if you have questions, just uh, don't hesitate no, to contact us. All right? Uh, message us then we'll be glad no, to assist you and give shed light no, on all your questions and clarifications so back to you sir ej maraming salamat engelbert maraming maraming salamat and tama ka sir engelbert uh, kung meron sila mga tanong kung meron sila mga clarifications i-chat lang tayo sa actually mag-comment lang sa ating uh, sa ating comment section and then we will try to answer them and syempre mga kaibigan Kung kayo ay nabitin sa lecture ni Engelbert ngayon, bukas siya ay magbabalik. Sir Engelbert, ano naman ang uh, yes. papag-aaral natin bukas? Mas, mas, kung, mas, uh, kung mas na-excite kayo tonight, kung mas ma-excite pa kayo bukas, our topic is assessment of learning. Yan. Yan. Nako, ano Sir to? Engelbert, mahirap ba yan? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, actually, sir, ito yung parang majority ha, of the test takers kapag sasabihin natin prof ed, professional education. Parang et, yung assessment ata yung pinakamahirap in the sense na may math component kasi siya. No? May mga computation, may mga item analysis na kailangan talaga yung critical thinking skills, yung mga higher order thinking skills talaga sa Kaya dapat talaga, sir Engelbert, huwag niyo lang i-miss ang lecture mo bukas <laughs> oh, about oh, assessment. Ah, oh. So sana naman no atabayan niyo kami bukas no dapat andito pa rin kayo no naka ano naka suporta no naka panood sa aming mga lectures same time po tayo tomorrow 7 pm yes. at tomorrow ba- magbabalik po ang ating Sir Engelbert Reyes in the meantime mga kaibigan before we say goodbye please don't forget to like our channel subscribe tayo and then of course um share it at ku uh, syempre huwag kalimutan din na i-hit ang notification bell. Sir Engelbert, magpaalang ka sa kanya la. Thank you. Maraming salamat po. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Magkikita pa tayo bukas. Maraming maraming uh, salamat sa ating night. mga viewers. Salamat yeah. kay Ma'am Jen and John Sir Noy and Jen din. Pati si Ate Clarissa. Maraming maraming yes. salamat. See you Salta tomorrow, Sir everybody. Boys. At Ma'am Jen. Ay, oo nga pala. We forgot. Bukas may raffle tayo. I forgot. We forgot to mention it. Bukas po meron oh, tayong raffle. Okay. Yes, That's kaya okay yung wawala bukas. So you should be there, no? Ano yung magiging price, sir? Bukas na um, Gcash. <laughs> Gcash, wow. Yes, Gcash. Nakuha Gcash talaga. So, Ibang klase ang mga kaibigan. <laughs> Gcash yan. O, oh, wag palampasin. <laughs> uh, so, ipakalat po sa inyo mga kaibigan tomorrow. Assessment ni Sir Engelbert. Meron pa tayong raffle ng Gcash bukas. In the meantime, maraming maraming salamat. And see you tomorrow, everybody. Good night. Happy Independence Day. Happy Independence Day to us. Bye. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas, everybody. Mabuhay See you tomorrow. Pilipinas.